Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanted to spend a little bit of time focusing on a tool called Cisco Yang Suite. Now, Cisco Yang Suite is a open source testing and development tool that makes using and testing and exploring Yang models a lot easier, which is helpful when you're trying to develop network automation applications that leverage NetConf or RESTConf. Now, there are two primary reasons I wanted to do this video. One of which is that back when I was studying for the DevNet certification exams, a lot of the different tools and APIs that you needed to learn seemed a lot easier because once you get familiarized with REST APIs and calling those with Python, a lot of it seems like just figuring out the right URL to call and what data comes back and how to handle that. But when it came to working with NetConf and RESTConf, I felt completely lost and it took me a lot longer to wrap my brain around how exactly they work, how I'm using them, how do I figure out what models to even use to pull back the information that I want to retrieve from a device, and I just didn't understand how to interact with them. Now, of course, with enough practice and time and playing around with them, I feel like nowadays I'm in a much better state and I use NetConf and RESTConf a lot more in my everyday job. But one of the things that has helped me get to a point where I'm very comfortable with using NetConf and RESTConf and Yang models is Cisco Yang Suite. Now, the second reason that I really wanted to do a video on this is that even today, now that those exams have been out for several years, I still talk to and work with people all the time who are scared of NetConf and RESTConf and don't know where to go and don't know how to find what they need. And oftentimes someone will come to me and ask, hey, I need to query X API for, you know, a Cisco Catalyst switch. And where do I find the API documentation? Where do I find the call that I need to make? How do I do this? And sometimes I'll send back, hey, here's the Yang model. Here's the XML payload that you need to send or the RESTConf payload that you need to send. And they'll be like, hey, where, where did you even find that? How did you find that stuff so quickly? Like, I have no idea how to how to interpret these Yang models and dive through the documentation and all that stuff. So in this video, what we'll do is we will walk through setting up, installing, and configuring Cisco Yang Suite, walking through all of the pieces that we need to to get up and running, and then we're going to walk through an example use case of something that we wanted to automate, how we can find those Yang models, how we can get started with figuring out what we need to query, and how we need to go about that. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So to begin with, I have the GitHub page for the Yang Suite repository. Now, if we scroll down through the page just a little bit, what we can see is that we have two primary methods of setting this up and installing it, one of which is going to be via Docker, where we spin up a couple of containers and then just have this on whenever we need it. Or we can do a local install via pip, which I think is actually a newer thing. For me, since I do use this in my job all the time, I have a dedicated Docker server stood up with Yang Suite running, and it is running all the time because I use it probably several times a week. So we're going to go through the Docker setup and install. However, I did want to just make you aware that if you wanted to, you could also try the pip-based install if you just needed to install it locally and you didn't have a Docker instance. So to get started with installing, we'll just scroll back up to the top and grab the get URL. And we'll jump over to the Docker host I have right now. And if we do a Docker PS, we can see that there are no containers running right now. And so we'll go ahead and clone the Yang Suite repository, which will take just a second. Once the repository has been pulled down, we will go ahead and move into that Yang Suite repository and then move into the Docker folder. And to get started, all we have to do is run the start Yang Suite script. And this is going to walk us through the first time setup of Yang Suite. And so we will be prompted to provide a admin username and password to log into the Yang Suite system. We'll also be prompted to provide an email address. I'll say yes to using test certificates. So this will automatically generate self-signed certificates for us to use in our lab environment. And after all that's done, this will go ahead and burn through building all of the containers, installing everything, setting up, adding our user account, certificates, and all that fun stuff. Depending on what you're running this on, this process could take a little while. So let's just go ahead and come back in a second when this is done. Once that script is done building the containers and getting everything up, it will actually start off the containers and kick them off. 
So we can see on the screen now that we have the active Yang Suite logging being displayed on our console. So if we wanted to, we could just jump straight ahead and log into the web interface and get started. By default, this is only going to be enabled for local access. So if you are running this on like a Docker desktop instance on your local PC, you would already be able to bring up the web browser and access it. However, because I'm running this on a remote Docker host in my lab environment, we're going to need to make a change to allow remote access. So in order to do that, I'll go ahead and hit Control C, which will stop all of the Docker containers for Yang Suite. Once that's done, let's take a quick look at the files that are in the Yang Suite directory in this Docker folder. And what we're going to be looking for is a file called setup.env. And this will be where Yang Suite stores all of the environmental variables that it uses on startup. So if we edit that file real quick, what we'll be looking for is the Django allowed hosts, which right now is set to localhost. And you'll need to change this to the IP address of your Docker host. And once that's done, all we'll have to do is run a docker compose up d which will restart our Yang Suite containers. And if we do a docker ps, we can see that all three of those are up and running. And one thing to note is that on the Docker Nginx front end, this is running on port 8443. And we'll jump over to a web browser and go ahead and paste in the URL for our Docker host, which is going to be HTTPS on port 8443. The first thing we'll be prompted for is to accept the user agreements, which we will do. Then we can log in with the administrative user account that we created using that startup script. And then we'll be placed on the primary front welcome page for Cisco Yang Suite. Now, in order to get started with using Yang Suite, the first thing that we're going to need to do is load in Yang models. By default, Yang Suite is just the software itself. It does not come preloaded with Yang models for any of the network vendors' equipment. And so we're going to need to pull down the models that we want to use for whatever types of devices we want to query. So to do that, we'll go to Setup and then Yang Files and Repositories. And you can see there is no Yang module repository configured right now. So we'll go ahead and click New Repository. For the examples in this video, I will be using a Cisco Catalyst 9800 wireless controller that is running iOS XE 17.6.1. So I'll go ahead and name my repository iOS XE 1761, since we are going to be able to pull down Yang models by software version. And so by default on the left side, we'll see that there are no Yang models downloaded yet. We'll have the option to upload them directly from your PC if you like, or via SCP. You can also query models off of a device via Netcom, but the method that we'll use is straight from the Yang Models Git repository. So we'll have to provide some information, and we'll get that straight from the Yang Models slash Yang GitHub repository. This is where you'll find probably most, if not all, of the Yang models that you'll probably be working with. So the first thing that Yang Suite will need is that repository URL. So we'll go ahead and grab that and paste it into Yang Suite. And the branch for this is going to be main. Then we need to figure out what directory we need. And this is going to be the path to the specific vendor and version of the Yang models that we want to work with. So if we hop back over to the Yang models GitHub repository, we'll navigate to vendor, then down to Cisco. And we are working with an XE device, so we'll click on that. And then since the wireless controller I'm using is running 17.6.1, we will download the folder for 17.6.1. Now, as we can see in this folder, there are a bunch of .yang files, which are all the models we're going to want to pull down. So we'll go ahead and copy this path, which is slash vendor slash Cisco slash XE slash 17.6.1 and paste that into Yang Suite. I will also check the box for include subdirectories and then click import. Now this could take just a minute or two, but once it's done, we'll see that it says it downloaded 827 modules. And on the left side of the screen, we can see that big long scroll box that has a list of every module that was downloaded. Now in order to start using these Yang models that we've downloaded, we are going to need to configure at least one module set. Now a module set acts as a filter for the Yang models that we've downloaded. So in our example, we're going to be working with a wireless controller. So rather than pulling in all 827 of the models that we've downloaded, we might create a filter that only filters out just the wireless models 
So when we go to start testing and exploring different models to figure out what calls we need and where the information is stored, we don't have to peruse through all of these different models to figure that out. We have a nice filtered set of just the wireless set. So that's what we're going to be setting up here. We'll click setup and then go down to Yang module sets. And again, there aren't any configured by default. So we'll hit new Yang set and we will have to associate this to a top level Yang repository, which by default, it's going to be set to the only one that I have, which is iOS XE 1761. And I'll go ahead and just name this Yang set wireless, and then we'll hit create. Now on the right side of this menu, we're going to have a list of every Yang model that we have access to. And on the left side, it's just going to be the Yang models that are already included in this set. So again, in our example, we're going to be working with an iOS XE wireless controller. So I'll just go ahead and put in wireless for my filter. And that's going to return back a lot of the Cisco iOS XE wireless Yang models. And so once that comes back, I'll just go ahead and highlight everything and then hit add selected. Now, the first thing you'll notice is after I do that, the right side of the screen updates with some red text to say that there are dependencies missing. Some of the models that we just included in our filter might rely on underlying data types or other things that are pulled from other Yang models. And so if we try to use them in Yang Suite, it's not going to work unless we have those dependencies available. Now, the good thing for us is Yang Suite does just provide a one-click button to automatically figure out what those dependencies are and load them into our filter. So we'll go ahead and hit the button for locate and add missing dependencies. All right, and now that we're done with our module set, we only have one more piece of setup before we can start testing this out. And that is going to be configuring device profiles. So if we go over to setup and down to device profiles, this is going to be where we're going to add different network devices that we want to use to test our Yang models against. So Yang Suite does allow us to just pull in a lot of the Yang models and explore them in a graphical interface, but it also does allow us to create netconf or restconf calls in the interface and then test them against live devices. So we're going to be doing that just in a minute when we go through our example. So let's go ahead and configure a new device profile that has our wireless controller. I'll hit create new device. And for profile name, I'll go ahead and name this Catalyst 9800. And then I'll put in the IP address of the wireless controller and my username and password. Next, we're going to have to enable what services are available on this device. So I am going to enable NetConf and I'll click the button also to skip SSH key validation. I'll also click the button for device supports RESTCOM and SSH. And once we're done, we can just go ahead and click create profile. And once that device is created, we will want to double check that Yang Suite can successfully reach and log into that device using the profile we created. So I'll go ahead and select that device and click the button for check devices reachability. And after a minute, this does come back and show that it was able to ping the device as well as log in via NetConf, RESTCOMF, and SSH. Now that we have all of the initial setup and configuration all done, we have our Yang models loaded, we have our device set up and configured, we can take a look at the example of how to use this against a real device. So in this scenario that we're going to be walking through, let's say that we work for a company that has a 9800 series controller that runs all of our access points, and we have both a guest wireless network and an employee wireless network, but maybe because of company policy or some sort of compliance requirements, we need to change the pre-shared key for the guest wireless network on a regular basis. And we've gotten to the point where we're just so tired of doing this all the time that we wanted to see if it's possible to just automate that. So let's walk through how we could use Yang Suite in order to see if we could automate that process. So if we were just starting off and trying to just take a look at some of the Yang models and even figure out which one we might want to call. One of the things that we might do is go over to Explore and down to Yang. And once this loads up, we'll select our wireless Yang set, and then we'll look through the list of Yang models that we have. Now the exploration page is just going to load the models and allow you to peruse through them and see what attributes and information that they have. So sometimes this can be helpful if you want to try to figure out what exactly you might need to call. For our situation, we know that we want to edit the wireless LAN config. 
So we'll scroll down and we'll actually find the wireless WLAN config Yang model. We'll go ahead and select that for now and hit load modules. And once this loads, we'll expand the top level element and a couple down, we can see the WLAN config entries. We can see the description on the right side says that this stores wireless LAN configuration parameters. And if we look at the elements that are stored under that, we do see things that we want to be able to change, like the different security parameters for WEP and WPA and .1x. So this looks like this is probably the Yang model that we might want to use. However, we can spend all day looking at the models and trying to guess what information that they might contain. But one of the easiest ways to figure out whether or not those models contain the information you want is to make some test calls against a device to query that data back and see what we get. So in order to test that, we can go ahead and go down to protocols and down to netconf. And we'll start with netconf and then we'll explore how to do the same process in restconf in a minute. But within the netconf page, First, we will select our wireless Yang set. We'll reselect the WLAN config Yang model, and then we'll hit the load modules button. Now, by default, it's going to set our operation to get config, which is what we're going to want in this case, since we want to see the current configuration of the device. And I will also select my device, which is going to be that Catalyst 9800. Now, we have two window panes on the screen. On the left side, Yang Suite is going to load the Yang models that we can explore and edit and build what our payload is going to be. And on the right side is going to be the RPC payload that gets sent to the device. So to start with exploring, we'll just go ahead and go to the wireless WLAN config. We'll expand that. We'll go ahead and go down to the WLAN config entries and we'll check the box under value, just saying that we want to try to retrieve anything underneath that. And we'll hit build RPC. And so then that will automatically generate the XML that we need on the right side of the screen, where we can see that it is going to be a git configure operation pulling from the running configuration source. And it does have a filter applied that is just pulling back the wireless LAN config entries. And so this should pull back all config entries on our controller. But let's go ahead and test that. We'll click the button for run RPC which will open up a new window that establishes a netconf connection to our controller. And on the screen, we can quickly walk through the whole data flow. We can see that Yang Suite was able to establish a netconf session to our wireless controller. It did send our get config request for all wireless config entries. And we did receive a reply from that wireless controller. And based on that reply, it looks like we do have two wireless SSIDs configured. The first one is test lab network, which is going to be pretending to be our employee network. And then we have a second entry for our test guest network. Now under the guest network, I did configure the controller to show that pre-shared key in plain text so that we can see it change as we go through our examples. But for right now, our pre-shared key is just set to guest net one, two, three. Now, obviously in our little test netconf call, We've now pulled back every wireless network that the controller has and all of the different attributes for every single one of those networks. But who knows, in this example, we only have two wireless networks, but maybe our production controller has dozens. And at any rate, we know that we only have one guest wireless network and we only want to retrieve the pre-shared key on that network to make sure that it changed or didn't change. So let's see if we can filter down to just get those two pieces of information. And so if we go back over to the netconf testing page, we can expand the WLAN config entries. And so we'll go ahead and filter by profile name. So we'll go ahead and paste in our test guest network profile name, since that's going to be the SSID we want to retrieve information from. Now, if we only filtered by profile name, our XML response from the device is still going to contain all the other configuration parameters, which maybe we don't want. So if we scroll down just a little bit and find the PSK element, we can also filter by just the pre-shared key as well. And so the way that we'll do this is clicking the value box, but we're going to leave it empty. Now, by leaving this box empty, we're saying that we don't care about what the value of PSK is. We just want to bring that data back. So we're not looking for any specific 
pre-shared key, we're just looking for the existence of any pre-shared key. And so if we go back up to the top and we'll go ahead and clear out our existing XML, and then we'll click build our PC again, we'll see a similar call that we had before, but this time we are filtering by the profile name of test guest network. And we are also requesting back the field of PSK. And so we'll click run our PC. And that will go ahead and send that filtered call to our device, which we can see. And if we scroll down just a little bit, sure enough, the response we received from our wireless controller only contains the current profile name of test guest network and the currently configured pre shared key, which is guest net123. Now, this starts to make our automation process a little bit easier since now we have the complete NetConf XML payload that we'd need to be able to send to a device if we just wanted to see what the currently configured pre shared key for our guest network is. And the other fun thing is that once we want to start changing this pre shared key, we already have most of the work done for us. So if we go back over to the NetConf RPC page, all we're going to need to do is change our NetConf operation from get config to edit config, saying that now we want to make a configuration change. Now, in order to change the pre shared key, we're going to need to send the profile name that we want to edit and the value that we want to change. But since our filter is already set with the right profile name and we have pre shared key selected, the only thing that we're actually going to need to do here is just enter in our new pre shared key. And so I'll go ahead and set our new key to new password 123. We'll clear the RPC on the right side and hit build RPC one more time. And sure enough, now we see a similar payload than we did before, but this time it does say edit config. And in this case, we are specifying a very specific value for what our PSK is. So now if we hit run RPC, this will execute this netconf call directly against our wireless controller, and it will change the active pre-shared key for our guest network. And so once we execute that, we'll scroll down in our status window and we'll see that Yang Suite did send the edit config request that is making a call against our test guest network profile and asking to change the pre-shared key. And the response we received from the wireless controller was just OK. While it's safe to assume that maybe the controller took that information and made the change that we wanted to, we can also go back to our NetConf RPC page and double check that by doing that same get request that we did before. So I'll hop back over to the other page real quick. I'll switch my call back to get config. I'll remove the pre shared key that we wanted to configure. And then I'll clear and rebuild the RPC call. And that should build a filter that looks exactly like the one that we were using just a minute ago. And sure enough, we're going to get just the currently configured pre shared key back from the device, which is in fact our new password 123. So if we were looking to automate this process using NetConf, we've now figured out what those XML payloads are for making a NetConf call to getting the current configured pre-shared key, as well as sending an edit configure request to changing the current configured pre-shared key. Now, of course, you could be watching this and asking, OK, well, I get how we did all of that and how we got here, but how do I take those XML payloads and actually send them through Python? And the cool thing about Yang Suite in this case is that it actually does have some built in features to automatically generate Python scripts or Ansible playbooks. So that if you're unfamiliar with sending and receiving NetConf calls through Python, you can actually auto generate some scripts here that'll give a really base level example of how to use it, which should hopefully get you a jumping point to getting started with those scripts. So, in order to access those, we'll hit replays. And I'll go ahead and hit generate Python script, which will download a script.py. And so once that's downloaded, I will go ahead and open that up in VS Code. And we can see that the sample script is using the NCC client module in Python. And it pastes in our big git config XML payload up at the top and creates a little script that has command line arguments to provide the host username and password for the device that we want to test against. And this will go ahead and make that netconf connection out to the device, send our payload of whatever we wanted to do, and return that and parse part of the XML for us. So again, if you were just looking for how to get started with building these netconf payloads and executing some stuff in Python, those auto generated scripts can provide a good jump off point to getting started with your automation. 
Now, of course, the other thing that I hear from people often is, I don't like working with XML. How do I do all of this with just JSON? Can I do that? And of course you can. But if we're going to do that, we can't use netconf for that because netconf is exclusively in XML. We're actually going to look at how to do this exact same call by using restconf, which is then making all of those same Yang model calls, but through a REST-based web API. And so we can explore those kind of in the same way by going over to protocols, restconf. And again, in this interface, we'll go ahead and select our wireless Yang set, and we'll select the same WLAN config model that we were using from before. And last but not least, we'll select our Catalyst 9800 device, and then click on Load Modules. Now you'll see in this case, once that loaded, it says Tree Generated, click on a node to generate the APIs. And so the way that we're going to work with this interface is a little bit different from the NetConf interface. And so what we'll do is we'll expand the wireless WLAN config, and we will click on the WLAN config entries, and then we'll go up to the top and click Generate APIs. And once we click that button, Yang Suite will use the Yang model definitions to automatically build some REST API documentation for us here. And so if you've used a lot of other REST API documentation, this is going to look kind of similar. And so we'll have a list of all of the different requests that we could potentially execute against our device. So for example, when we were working with NetConf, the first thing that we did was just retrieve all wireless SSID configuration. And so we can do a similar call by issuing an HTTP GET to slash data slash Cisco IOS XE wireless WLAN config and querying for WLAN config entries. And this interface does have the ability for us to try it out live. So we'll hit try it out and then we'll click the execute button. And this will print out the request URL and the data that we're using. So if we scroll down a little bit after trying this out, we'll get an HTTP 200, meaning that the request was successful. And we'll have a JSON output that shows our two wireless SSIDs. Again, we have one for our lab network and then one for our guest network. And sure enough, if we scroll down on our guest network, we can see that the currently configured pre-shared key is new password 123 which is what we had just configured via NetConf a moment ago. And so let's say that we wanted to follow kind of a similar flow to what we did with NetConf and just get the currently configured pre-shared key only for the one specific wireless profile that we want to look at, which is our guest network. I'll go ahead and search all of these API calls for slash PSK, which is going to be that last element for the pre-shared key. And sure enough, I'll come across a section that has wireless LAN config entry equals to whatever profile name and then slash PSK. And we'll expand the HTTP get request and I'll click try it out. We'll go ahead and paste in our test guest network profile name and I'll hit execute. And pretty quick, we'll get an HTTP 200 response back with the response body containing just the pre-shared key for our test guest network. Now, if we wanted to edit it, since we're already here, all we have to do is scroll up just a little bit, and I will expand the patch request. And again, we will paste in our guest network profile name, and Yang Suite will automatically generate the sample request payload, which just has the PSK value and then whatever we want to set it to. So I'll go ahead and set our new PSK to another new PSK123, and then we'll test that call by clicking the execute button. And once again, Yang Suite will give us the request URL and a curl call so that if we wanted to take that and test it elsewhere or use it in our script, we have all of that information ready for us. And once that test executes, we do get the HTTP 204, which means that it was accepted. And of course, we can validate this by going back down to that HTTP git and executing it again to query what the currently configured pre-shared key is. And once that executes, sure enough, our new wireless pre-shared key is another new PSK123. Okay, well that's about all I had for this video. I feel like when I first started learning about Yang models and how to use them with NetConf and RESTConf, I had definitely built them up to be more complex in my head than they were in reality. But it wasn't until I found tools like Yang Suite that I started becoming more comfortable with actually using NetConf and RESTConf. And so I still run into quite a handful of people these days who aren't aware that Yang Suite exists. And so my hope with this video is that I've shown just enough of how to get started with Yang Suite and what it's capable of. 
that if you are interested in further exploring Yang models and testing out this kind of thing, I'm hoping that this has given you just enough to get started with and, you know, start exploring and get comfortable in your own way. Alright, and I guess that's all I had, so thank you so much for watching.